Good day, fellow investors. Bob Iger is the old, new CEO of Disney. And I don't know if you know, but I'm a researcher. I have a research platform. And if you go to my research platform, there is something I'm currently researching. Okay, Italy, but on free preview, you can check my research of the SAP 500 stock by stock. This is from 40 onward. And if you just scroll here down, not on the document, but here, you can find uh, already one 240 that I have done. And you have many, many interesting stocks here, of which one is Disney. So here we have it, Disney. Check it out. This is free preview, don't forget. But let's make an analysis here, the stock, the business, the outlook, and whether Bob Iger can turn things. And his strategy is, I'm coming in, I'm back, I'll swing my Mickey Mouse and things will be better. I would argue on that strategy. So the stock didn't do well over the last two years, down 50% from this streaming mania that has reverted to the mean and Disney is back to where it was. Perhaps the best explanation for the business and what's going on was made by Charlie Munger because he simply said that practically every business that Disney has has gotten tougher than it used to be. Again, welcome to human life. So we have to see at what price Disney might be a bargain and whether it is an investment to consider at all. Because yes, it was easily, but now practically every front, it's much more difficult. How would you like running the sports ESPN now at Disney compared to its heyday? It's going to be way harder for them, which means weaker margins. And that's also why you see the stock down. Now, let's discuss the business, the new CEO, the issues, and see how that reflects with the stock price. I've went to Disney's investor page and I have seen the first thing here is uh, they say they added 57 million subscriptions for a total of more than 235 million. I think Netflix has something around that 229 or 219 million subscriptions. And when you look at the market, this was also where Bill Ackman missed it with Netflix. That's it. That's the maximum range. Maybe Disney, given it's more for kids, will hit 300 million. But that's the top range at, I think, $7 or something per month. And then they have to see whether they will become profitable ever or in the long term. So why do I say 245 million or 300 is the top? Because we all share our passwords with family and there are about 900 million homes that can afford Disney's or Netflix. It's a highly competitive environment and then it's hard not to share with your family and friends. You can say whatever, they can try to change that, but then they will lose a lot of subscriptions. What's going on? If we focus on uh, the year ended, the last results, Disney Media Entertainment Production didn't do much profitability there. These are operating profits when you add the debt, etc. Not really great. Parks finally doing better. So, okay, there was some profitability, but not as expected by the market, not turning around. And when you look at the business, the best thing is to go check what the business is doing, check the presentations. In this case, we have a transcript, the last one from the Morgan Stanley technology. And what also the CEO says, we have to turn streaming into a profitable business. But I discussed this in this short, where I said that it's very hard to expect profitability given the spending they are doing. So it might look like the airlines industry where nobody never made money. Bob Iger explains the business very well. There are six or seven basically well-funded aggressive streaming businesses out there all seeking the same subscribers and in many cases competing for the same content. Not everyone is going to win. Why do you think, Bob, that somebody is going to win. Usually with this highly competitive, and you are not just competing with six streaming others, they are competing for content. You're competing with me now for content, with anything we do watching a screen. And 
it seems that the content will just keep on arriving, arriving, arriving. You'll just need to keep on investing, investing, competing. And it feels like the only winner here will be the customer. That's the main risk here. And then, of course, uh, the key there, the talk and Bob Iger coming back is reorganization, cutting jobs, restructuring. But I don't think that the headcount or the reorganization was the issue. It was more about the business, sports, etc. It's an extremely competitive environment. And I just feel that Bob Iger is a little bit over his head here, or he has been called back like the savior, but he's 72 years old. He has made his money in the past. And just look at his attitude. So the analyst is just asking about ESPN and whether that will be reported separately. And Bob replies, oh, you're salivating over there. I don't see that as a reply of a normal CEO. Plus, then we are both Knicks fans. And uh, if you're in Los Angeles Saturday, come to the game, etc. So he is so cocky, so convinced about himself that he is talking about Knicks games and uh, I'll later explain what kind of investors should invest in Disney. Maybe it's not you. So his net worth is there and he did very well by acquiring Lucasfilms, Pixar, Marvel, but he also left Disney with a big pile of debt. Whether he will be successful or not, it's easy to acquire companies, grow and take debt. But we don't know whether that will be enough and whether that will lead to profitability and cash flows down the road. Because this is the key now. If you look at the revenues, 2017, the 2010s, it was very profitable. Net income was 15% of revenues, all great. And then streaming came, more competition, parks were down, yes, but now parks have been full in 2022 and those parks are still not yet covering for everything else and the net margins are much lower. And as Charlie Munger said, this great times, 15% net margins are likely over. So we have to lower those net margins significantly and what if they make only 8 billion, let's say, in a good year, that is still a 10% net profit margin that is still high. And then when it comes to investing in Disney, yes, the stock is down, but this was just the exuberance on the streaming, valuing it like Netflix, then it crashed. But if I look at the market capitalization, it is 179 billion. So even if they reach 8 billion of profitability one day, that is still just a P ratio of 22, 23, somewhere down the road, which makes even this risky. So the question now for me is, are you a Disney stock investor? This hit me from the discussion when the analyst asked questions. The analyst said, I've had a lot of conversation with investors about your stock. And then I'm thinking, yes, it's very easy to sell Disney. So I'm an investment banker, investors, it's a great name. Buffett said he made a big mistake in 1960 something where he didn't buy Disney, but that has now changed. Things change with businesses. As Charlie Munger said, that's life. The incredible net income and profitability is likely over. It can go into a very ugly business. And therefore, I would not buy it. I would leave it to the investment bankers. The $50 million rich widow comes in. What's the easiest sell for her? It's to just sell her Disney get 1-2% of her portfolio no matter where the stock goes. That's why investment bankers like the stock. That's why it's so discussed. You don't need to go on that boat. Therefore, it doesn't even fit our portfolio because I need a clear positive risk and reward, something undervalued to even take a position into for educational purposes at the start. So I would need now a P ratio of 15, that can go to seven if things turn positively. Now I'm simply betting, speculating, which is not what we do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.